Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today and I just recorded this whole video and realized my microphone wasn't plugged in. So here we are again. Uh, this video is going to be a video on the bioactive or not so bioactive leopard gecko tank behind me. Uh, we'll get into that later in the video, but a naturalistic leopard gecko setup, if you will. So if you guys are curious or wanting to start your leopard gecko off in a naturalistic setup versus a more sterile kind of setup, this is just going to be a video kind of documenting the updates that I've noticed as well as some of the benefits to keeping your animal in a naturalistic setup. So make sure you stay tuned and let's get into the video. Before I start this video, I just want to say that I do have an Instagram. I have to plug the Instagram. I'm sorry. I'm super active there. So if you guys want to get in contact with me more personally, DMs, live streams, that kind of thing, make sure you shoot that a follow. I also wanted to mention that if you guys have any questions or something that I didn't address in this video, Make sure you leave it in the comment section. I reply to every single comment. So if you have any questions or concerns or things you just want to address about the video, make sure you let me know in the comment section or you could always DM me on Instagram, your choice, whichever one. Now with that said, we can move on to uh, the video. Before we get into the, the heart, the meat of this video, I wanted to talk about Stryker to you guys. So you guys all know Stryker, he is the OG, he is the man of the room, he's the, he's the first ever reptile that I ever got and he actually turns 14 today. So this is kind of a fitting video for you guys to check him out and to see his new digs or the update on his digs. But as some of you longer time viewers, I suppose, may or may not have seen the video where I posted that Stryker actually got burned while I was in Belize. Um, I didn't realize that his tank came with a 12.0 UVB and it was on for regular daylight hours and it basically cooked him. So <laughs> that's not good. Uh, he got a lot of dermal burns. Uh, it wasn't due to overheating heat pads or anything. I saw some comments about that in the, in the video. Oh, how did he get burned? It was because of the UVB. That's not an argument for not providing UVB. You just have to provide less to your nocturnal animals. Now I wanted to say that if you guys haven't seen that video, there will be a link in one of these two corners up here for you guys to go check out. Uh, make sure you go check it out and uh, educate yourself on what I'm talking about here. Uh, I treated him and he's doing fantastic. His colors are super vibrant. He's very active. He peruses around his enclosure all the time. And I'm just so happy that I didn't permanently uh, injure my OG, my man. So that's just kind of the main point of this update is just that he's doing fine. Don't worry about him. He's eating. He's uh, very active. And I think he enjoys his tank. Speaking of his tank, I just wanted to do a quick flashback into the past when I first was setting up his tank so you guys get a general gist of what it looked like before uh, now obviously like five six months ago I can't actually remember when I posted it but uh, several months ago when I first posted the video and was first setting it up so why don't we go check that out now that we're seeing this older footage I wanted you guys to really pay attention to a couple different things note the look of the Arcadia earth mix air the substrate that I'm pouring in as well as just the general appearance of the tank, like how small most of the succulents are and how much they've actually grown since I made this video. Pay attention to those things as you're watching this clip. And now that we've sufficiently refreshed our memory, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about his tank. You can see it here, it is doing very well. Uh, I think the most obvious thing and the first thing we're gonna talk about is the succulents and the live plants in his tank. I know Rebecca from Leopard Gecko Talks can't seem to keep any succulents alive in her Leopard Gecko tank. Rebecca, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. But yes, the, the succulents are doing very well in my tank. Sorry for the little digression. Uh, Rebecca, I hope you don't take offense to that if you watch this. Unfortunately, the only plant that I actually know the name of is the Desert Rose right in the middle here. And that's been the plant that's probably struggled the most for me. It did really, really well for a good amount of time. And then in the last couple weeks, it's just dropped all of its leaves in a couple days. Uh, it's not doing quite as well, unfortunately. I've read a couple different things on the internet about what it could be. It could be a drought. Uh, which is something that they naturally go through. They just drop all their leaves and kind of rest dormant for however many months that that'll last or weeks. I don't really know. Or, and my kind of sneaking suspicion is that it could be a nutrient deficiency. I don't know how reasonable that is just because the Arcadia Earth Mix does have a lot of nutrients in it. I don't really see it being the case that it's nutrient deficient, so... 
due to the drop of temperatures in my room, as well as the lack of watering in the roots, I think that's probably what it is, is dormant. Now with that said, the rest of the plants are actually doing really, really well. They are growing. As you can see, this one on the right side of your screen is doing super, super well. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I actually don't know the names of pretty much any of the succulents in here. So if you guys want to, like, send me a screenshot or whatever and just label the different uh, succulents in there, that would be sick. And I'll give you a shout out in my next video or on Instagram or something, if you can do that for me. Uh, I would love to hear uh, what they're called and I think it'd be kind of cool for engagement. So hit me up. The other plants are doing fine. They're just kind of like sticking in there. I think they get a little bit dried out too frequently and they're just kind of struggling. They're not really growing, they're not really dying, so that's a good thing. I'm trying to increase the humidity, so if you guys haven't seen my Leopard Gecko Care video that kind of explains the likely levels of humidity that they experience throughout the day, uh, I would go check out that video. Again, linked in the cards up on the top of your screen for you to go check out. Basically, I'm trying to raise the humidity in the tank, so I'm spraying it a few times a week. I, I think I might do a little bit shorter sprays almost every day, just for the sake of the plants. Uh, if I notice that Stryker is developing some skin issues or something like that, obviously I'll stop, but uh, I don't think it's too unreasonable to do that. So for those of you that do not know what I'm talking about, make sure you go check out that video. Besides that, I, I think that's really all I can say about the plants. They're doing fine. Uh, I also would like to mention, and I'll mention later in the video, just throw in some succulents into your tank. They are so easy to care for. They do really well and they just add a whole nother dimension of beauty to a arid setup. So many people have kind of boring, sterile, meh setups. I think it's really cool to add some living elements into it other than the gecko itself. That's just me though. The reason why I said uh, not so bioactive naturalistic setup is because it's not bioactive at all anymore. There might be a couple superworms in there that are lurking in the in the substrate, but other than that, there is nothing. All of the zebra isopods that I put in either died or were eaten, and the tank dried out too much in between when I started misting and uh, like the death of the springtails, so they were not able to come back. What I'm going to do to combat the, the lack of bioactivity is A, I contacted one of my friends that has a different species of isopod. I'm gonna try them out and see how they do. And two, I'm going to put in a big clump of moist sphagnum moss into his cork bark hide. Um, that's actually where he goes to the bathroom anyway, so that'll work out really well. Basically what the thought process is behind that is the animals, the invertebrates that are living in there will kind of congregate to that moisture and live amongst the sphagnum moss. And then at nighttime when the humidity rises, they will disperse and do their uh, detritivore duties and eat the waste that Stryker produces. I can definitely do an update a couple months from now and let you guys know if you're interested. Just let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to hear more about it. If you guys have any other suggestions, uh, definitely let me know in the comments. I'm open to all suggestions that you have. If you've done isopods before in leopard gecko tanks, certainly let me know what species you have kept successfully. Directly relating to the bioactivity, I also wanted to mention the Arcadia Earth Mix. I think besides the bioactivity, the Arcadia Earth Mix is kind of the one thing that I'd like to address. It's not necessarily a negative, and I still recommend it to everybody that can possibly find it. To me, it's kind of weird, and I've seen Rebecca's had this issue. I've seen a couple people have this issue of the, uh, of the substrate basically kind of sifting itself and the larger particles rising to the top while the smaller, finer peat, I think they use, and like worm casting and stuff sink towards the bottom. And it leaves you with what you see in front of you now. It is basically just a kind of grainy substrate that really isn't all that visually appealing. But other than that weird sifting issue, it's totally safe for them to ingest. Obviously, I don't wanna get into impaction right now, but a quick note, impaction is really the issue with Hydration and heat, it's a totally man-made thing. Uh, if you have proper heating and hydration in your geckos, you, unless they're eating mouthfuls of like shitty calcium sand or something like that, impaction likely will not happen. I just wanna let you know that I do recommend the Arcadia Earth Mix. Just beware that you saw what it looked like when I first put it in there, and this is what it looks like now. So that being said, uh, I just wanted to touch 
a little bit about on the positives of keeping your animals any animal really in a more naturalistic uh whether it's bioactive or not set up i am a heavy advocate as you can tell everything right now is in a more naturalistic setup there's no paper towels there's nothing like that in my room i will heavily advocate for the use of loose substrates if it's done properly if you have thermometers gauging the heat in the tank if you have adequate ventilation that kind of stuff you just have to make sure that you're providing hydration and uh, heat to reduce the onset of impaction to hopefully zero. Now that I've kind of addressed that, some of the benefits that I see from keeping your animals in a naturalistic setup is just their natural behaviors. Like Stryker was just a boring kind of meh type lizard when I had him in his old setup. He would go hide, he'd walk around at night, but now that I've seen what they do in a more like wild behavior it's incredible you can see right here on the screen this rock and if you saw the video and you watched the whole thing i actually packed that under the rock with the arcadia earth mix and he ended up digging it all out and uses that as a hide now so it's really cool to see their naturalistic behavior of building their own hides and like filling some of their other hides to make it theirs and make it more comfortable for them I think that is definitely worth the investment and I hope other people feel that same sentiment. It's really nice to see uh, he's out basking on like rock ledges and just kind of sticking his head out and it's really interesting to me. If you don't think that's kind of interesting or you don't think it's enriching to your gecko, I'm sorry, but that's just from my relatively well-educated perspective on the keeping of your animals in a naturalistic setup. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, definitely do not hesitate to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please keep it civil. Uh, we are typically a pretty good community, so I really appreciate that from you guys. Make sure you smash that like button down below. And when you're down there, if you want to see more reptile, uh, fish, frog, plant-related content in the future, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell right next to it. That way you get notified every single time I go live or post a video, which is typically once a week, and I'm hoping to bump that up over next semester. So... With that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Merry Christmas if I don't see you before Christmas. And to those of you that don't celebrate Christmas, happy holidays. We'll catch you in the next video. See you later. Bye.